Have you ever wondered what chord this is? Just the open strings on a standard tuned guitar. The notes E, A, D, G, B and E. Any set of notes, including this set of notes, can be given a chord name, a chord label. Although some sets of notes are easier to label than others based on the way that Western music theory works. But today I'm going to show you how we can name this set of notes as a chord and I'm going to show you how we can actually put this chord to work in a song. The majority of our common chord types, including major chords, minor, diminished, augmented, 7, 9, 11, etc., are what we call tertiary harmony, which is just a fancy way of saying that they are built by stacking thirds up. A dominant seventh chord, for example, is a minor third on top of a minor third on top of a major third. However, the guitar is not tuned in thirds, it's tuned in fourths. The relationship between almost all of these notes is a perfect fourth. Harmony built from fourths is called quartal harmony. And because our Western chord labelling system is built around tertiary harmony, not quartal, chords made by stacking fourths up will often be a bit awkward to name. However, there is one interval in this set of notes in our open guitar strings that isn't a fourth. Between the G and B string is not a perfect fourth, but a major third. In fact, because of this third, it means that the top three strings of a guitar are actually an E minor triad in first inversion. So that's a great starting point for giving this set of notes a name, a chord label. We just need to now factor in the remaining three strings and we'll have a proper chord name for the open strings of the guitar. Well, the lowest string on the guitar, the E string, takes care of itself because it fits perfectly into our E minor triad. So now we have four strings of the guitar sorted and we have an E minor chord, a simple E minor chord. So we just need to factor in the D and the A now. Well, when you add a D to an E minor chord, you get E minor seven. So by factoring in the D string here, we now have an E minor seven chord. So that just leaves us with the A string to take account of. The A here is definitely the most awkward note to fit into the chord name. We could consider A the 11th degree of the scale, so we could call it add 11, E minor seven, add 11, and that would account for all of the notes in our chord. However, considering this A is the second lowest note in the chord voicing, we'd perhaps be better off referring to it as add 4, not add 11. Because although of course that's the same note in either instance, the A, by saying 11th, it sort of suggests that the A will be quite high up in the voicing. Add 4 is a less conventional chord label, but it does help suggest that the A is low in the chord voice. So let's go with E minor 7, add 4. That's what we can call this set of notes, the open strings of the guitar. However, as I discussed in my recent chord symbol video, when we have a set of notes like this where we're not just stacking thirds up, there is usually more than one way that we could actually label the chord. For example, if we decided that the note A is actually the root note of the chord, then that means that these E's are now the fifth degree of the chord, the D is the fourth degree of the chord, the G is the dominant seventh, and the B is the ninth which gives us a A9 sus4 chord, and because E is the lowest note in the chord rather than A, it's A9 sus4 slash E. We could actually make an argument that any of the notes in this chord are the root note, and then base our chord label around that. For example, if we pretend that D was the root note, then A would be the fifth, E would be the ninth, B would be the sixth, G would be the fourth, and that would give us a D sus4 add 6, 9 over E. But of course, this is getting pretty convoluted now, and the further up the voicing we go, the more of a stretch it is to suggest that that is the root note of the chord. So I would say our two actual options for naming the open strings of a standard tune guitar as a chord are either E minor 7 add 4, or A9 sus4 over E. So we've worked out this chord could either be called E minor 7 add 4, or A9 sus4 over E. But how do we actually put it to work in a song? On its own, it's a bit of a tense, dissonant sound. It's not that pleasing to the ear. Well, all we have to do is think about the setting in which we hear it, the context, what comes before it and what comes after it. If we think about that, then we can find a logical and pleasing place to put this sound. The best way to make a chord sound like it makes sense is to think about each note in that chord, each voice, 
and choose somewhere logical and satisfying for the harmony to arrive at that note and then depart again. There's certainly more than one way that you could put this sound to use in a song, but this is what I came up with. E minor, E minor major seven, then our open string chord, A major, A minor, E, C, A sus two. So what's going on here? Well, the E minor chord casts us off into an E minor tonality. It sort of just establishes E minor as our home. Then the next chord, E minor major seven, is note for note the same as our previous chord, apart from we now have this D sharp note. This D sharp sets in motion a chromatic step-by-step -step line that ties each chord in the progression together. E moves down to D sharp, and to continue the line we need it to now move to D natural. And this is how we get our open string guitar chord to fit into this progression, because our open string chord has this D natural here. So it acts here to complete our jigsaw by continuing that chromatic line. And of course, to really bake this chord in, we need the chromatic line to continue after the chord. So that's why we've got this A major chord here. The C sharp in the A major chord continues the chromatic line that's tying these chords together. So we've now successfully woven our open string chord into a context where it makes sense. All that's left to do is complete this chord progression. So I chose to complete it with A minor and E major, which further continues and completes our chromatic line. And then we have C and A sus2, which is just a good little turnaround to get us back to the beginning to loop the progression. So that's my chord progression that puts to work the open string guitar chord, but let's actually make this into a song now. Mm -hmm. 